good morning good afternoon and even good evening to all the participants joining from all over the world thank you for joining international finance corporation ifc session titled industrial decarbonization lessons learned from the rmg industry i am aladi kifai dresa resource efficiency and knowledge management consultant from ifc before we start the event i would like to share some housekeeping rules if you have any questions please kindly use the q and a box in the bottom of the screen with that i would like to invite mr rajesh kumar meghani senior climate business specialist and climate anchor south asia ifc to give his opening remarks thank you very much and i hope uh, you can hear me so uh, first of all uh, thank you everyone for joining us today for this uh, very important discussion which we are having on industrial decarbonization organized by pact as a part of the third annual govishana global conference and i also i want to thank international center for climate and development uh, which is partnering with ifc at this year's conference uh, i just want to tell you that uh, the rmg and textile sector accounts for 5% of the global emissions and around 70% of the emissions come from the upstream such as the material production preparation and processing and 30% associated with the downstream retail operation and we have uh, brands like puma who are going to be the panelists in this uh, subsequent session and uh, okay so sorry for this i thought probably you were able to see me one, but one second let me put my camera on yes can you see me yes thank you thank you so much so we have this uh, major global brands uh, you know uh, like puma i can see mr patnaik is to be panelist and uh, these brands have set up the net zero target to align with 1.5 degree pathways outlined by the paris and uh, in context of bangladesh you know uh, bangladesh is one of the world's largest exporters of the gum uh, the garments and for them to take up this industrial decarbonization journey i think it's imperative right Be being being the largest exporter and we know good things about bangladesh you know you bangladesh rmt has set up the benchmark in in the lead certification and i think your number is almost 175 green building certificates so wherever we have worked with the rmg sector in bangladesh we have seen uh, most of them have led certified uh, factory buildings so you guys have set up the benchmark in that sense now for the other levers like circularity resource efficiency etc i'm sure uh, rmg sector is is taking the lead on on this front from ifc's perspective you know we are working with the corporate clients uh, worldwide uh, in the manufacturing sector to help them decarbonize you know when i say decarbonize it means the resource efficiency circularity renewable energy energy efficiency and and so on on the ad advisory side we have this flagship program which is pact partnership for cleaner textile which you are aware of it's already working uh, it's a holistic program which is supporting the whole entire textile value chain so what i believe and what ifc believe that collaboration is the key when we are talking of industrial decarbonization you alone can't achieve the objective right so we have to work with the government with the industry association factories international organizations financial institutions financing is also going to be the key part so we have to work together to help rmg sector decarbonize and i can see in the today's panel discussion we'll be hearing from from players top top players in the bangladesh rmg sectors and we we are interested to learn about we are looking forward to learn about how you are doing uh, and how you are able to achieve this uh, industrial decarbonization so uh, since time is short i'll be i'll I just want to say thank you for all for joining and uh, would like to hand over to to my colleague for for taking up the 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 panel discussion over to you thanks thank you rajesh for introducing ifc's climate commitments uh, we will now move on to the panel discussion session um our panel discussion session will be moderated by ms ashani shanuka ellis senior officer officer uh, operations officer ifc our panelists are ms nisha choudhury program manager ifc partner for cleaner textile pack program mr selim khan director ecotex limited mr archa patnai team head environment and sustainability puma Dr. Atik Rahman, Executive Director, Bikas. Uh, kindly requesting Ashani to begin the panel discussion. 
Thank you for um, the panelists for joining this session and also for all the participants. We look forward to uh, a good discussion. I will start off the discussion by asking each of the panelists two questions, and then we'll open it up to everyone, all the participants, uh, to put any questions they might have in the chat. Uh, Alavi will be moderating the questions as they come in and try to group some of them so that we can have you as a participants also uh, be able to, to ask questions. So if I could start uh, with Nishat. Nishat, could you tell us a little about the IFC-led PACT program and how it has been helping the decarbonization agenda of the RNG industry in Bangladesh? Thank you, Ashani. Um, IFC is promoting a green, resilient, inclusive, RNG, uh, inclusive development of the garment, ready-made garment industries of Bangladesh. And partnership for Vienna Textile uh, program is a great example. Uh, this is a program we started in 2013, and the program is funded by government of uh, Denmark and Netherlands. Uh, this program has helped more than 400 factories uh, in Bangladesh. We provided ad, uh, advisory support uh, to reduce uh, climate footprint of the industries. Um, <clears throat> as of now, the participating factories um, uh, reduced significant amount of water energy consumption. And I, just to give you an example, uh, the, the factories, uh, those who participated, they have Reduce freshwater consumption uh, by 30 billion liters, which is equ uh, equivalent to uh, annual water need of uh, 1 million people of Bangladesh. And greenhouse gas emission around 670,000 tons per year, which is equivalent to uh, removing over 100,000 cars from the road. Uh, this program also established a center, knowledge center called uh, Textile Technology Business Center, which is housed inside uh, uh, BGMA, that is Bangladesh Garment Manufacturing, uh, Ready-Made Garment Manufacturing Association. And, um, and the center is providing uh, information about best practices and technologies. And so far facilitated num uh, uh, more than 100 uh, business to business linkages with factories and the uh, uh, factories and the uh, uh, technology vendors and uh, organized um, 300 plus trainings uh, trained around 6500 uh, uh, factory professionals and um, besides this uh, the pro program also did a lot of advocacy and um, through this program uh, basically helped uh, bangladesh bank to set up a 200 million uh, green transformation fund uh, through which Bangladesh government is providing um, um, support uh, for low cost financing for the uh, for the uh, for the industry um, and yeah, the pact also helped in reducing um, uh, custom duty of 52 capital machineries uh, essential machineries um, uh, to help the industry reduce, you know, the uh, you know, uh, become more energy efficient and water efficient. Um, um, there, they are uh, also there. There's another example. Um, uh, factory, you know, you have heard about the zero discharge of hazardous uh, chemical initiative in Europe, whereby number of brands they have signed up and. Um, and there is one of the action plan is that to eliminate certain chemicals. So uh, three of these uh, harmful chemicals, um, uh, a a custom DT has been increased through our advocacy uh, uh, from 5% to 25% to discourage the industry uh, uh, to buy those uh, harmful chemicals. Uh, beside this, uh, uh, the, pro pro the program is also promoting scaling up rooftop solar. As you know, the energy uh, price is uh, uh, gradually increasing and the industry is uh, uh, looking into diversifying their energy uh, resource. So some of the regulatory uh, barriers such as provision for uh, private to private uh, power uh, purchase and power purchase guarantee, those two provisions are included in the net metering guideline. 
Thank you, Nishat. Um, the results of the PAC program are really impressive, but two things that stood out to me in what you said was one, reducing the uh, freshwater consumption uh, equivalent to the water needs of 1 million people in Bangladesh is really impressive. And the image of removing 100,000 cars from the road, um, I think that really helps us understand visually some of the impacts that you're talking about. Um, as a follow-up question, how can the lessons that we've learned um, from the decarbonization in the RMG sector uh, be, be translated into other sectors? And what do you see the future of decarbonization in Bangladesh looking like? So, uh, you know, uh, IFC already is looking into other sector, the hard to abate sector, like, for example, um, the construction industry. Uh, which includes the cement, uh, steel, and also uh, the aluminium industry, um, and uh, also light engineering. These are the you know uh, uh, highest consumer of the en energy, and also um, uh, they are the highest uh, emitter also. So, but uh, I've just re very recently started this program. We'll be definitely looking into. Uh, this industrial sector and of course um, uh, whatever we have learned from the pact we'll try to implement and of course uh, this hard to abate sector will need a lot of uh, you know help from us uh, to identify the decarbonization solution um, that's what we foresee and regarding uh, you know the future of decarbonization of Bangladesh you know Bangladesh uh, compared to other countries uh, uh, current level of emission is uh, low but um, the Bangladesh government has committed across uh, you know energy sector transport sector and industry and as well as agriculture sector uh, will try to address the emission level um, uh, as of now, you know, the uh, bang, uh, RMG sector uh, accounts around 10% of the uh, total energy consumption. And overall, the projected, you know, uh, you know the, large, uh, pro uh, the industrial sector is projected to be the highest con uh, contributor of the uh, GG mission. And uh, right, uh, right now it's generating around 30% of the greenhouse uh, gas emission. And uh, the government uh, uh, has committed, uh, has prioritized that to reduce the industrial energy intensity by uh, 20%. And we'll, we'll see more and more uh, you know the uh, the factories will be uh, uh, will be reducing uh, will be adopting energy efficiency measures and uh, circular economy solutions as well as look into renewable energy options and 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 uh, if I give an example of uh, um, you know the our uh, the program that we are currently managing PAC program so we see more and more factories are joining signing up uh, by themselves. Uh, to the program because they know that um, they must go green, uh, uh, so uh, so that to remain competitive uh, in the international mar market, and um, and there are very good examples. There are champions out there. Uh, they are also learning from them, and they know that the green initi initiative ensures long term, uh, you know, uh, business with buyers and also help to ent enter into a new market on uh, different markets. Thank you, Nishat, and um, this is actually a good way to transition to our next panelist. Uh, when you were talking about factories voluntarily wanting to to join the program, uh, Mrs. Salim Khan, if I could just ask you a couple of quick quick questions. Uh, the first of all, how do you see your company's decarbonization efforts fitting into the broader context of sustainable development and climate action in Bangladesh? Mm, thank you, uh, Asani. Thanks for uh, to admit this uh, panelist discussions regarding this decarbonization in textile apparel in Bangladesh. I would like to tell a few words about uh, that. I am leading the Ecotex uh, on behalf of Ecotex, so I have to say something about Ecotex. Okay. The Ecotex has start, uh, government started uh, since 2008. Ecotex is the, one of the largest lead platinum certified factory, having it uh, 1.9 million square fit area, an advanced high-tech machinery setup with knitting, dyeing, digital printing, placement printing, a state of art, denim washing also, and juxtaposed you have job washing. 
Denim, we have 20 lines, and Jersey, uh, roughly uh, 110 lines facility. You know, the, uh, from the very inception period, Ecotex uh, have, have some climate action initiative undertaken by the factory. And also, you know, that uh, more than 6,000 employees are now in, Bangladesh, in our uh, factory. So, so if I talk about the sustainability, so there's a three important pillars will come out. This is social, environmental, and also the uh, economic sustainability. So if we think about only social and environmental, so if you do not take care of the economic uh, sustainability, so our entire project will run, run, not run properly. So social, environmental, and economic sustainability, three pillars need to be considered to really uh, see the factory in the next level. So I, I add something that uh, what benefit you are giving this uh, employee of the 16,000 people right now, but a few words I want to tell about this. We are providing uh, uh, breakfast, lunch, as well as dinner. So breakfast and dinner are getting those who are doing the shifting duty and lunch only the, those who are doing the dry shift. So 16,000 people, we are providing the, the all this uh, is, is fresh food. So apart from this, I would like to describe about this, uh, this climate initiative, what Ecotex has been taken. Voice is clear or not, uh, Asani, is, is hearing me? Okay. So from, as because of, uh, I am uh, here in Ecotex from the very inception period, 2009 to today, already 23, uh, four years gone. So once you select that the machines, uh, what type of machines you have to buy, so very beginning, we have to take care of the water. You know, the water is, is, is big resources. So roughly, the, if you see the 97% of uh, uh, salt water in, the, in this planet, which is not drinkable, has, is captured by the ocean and salty lakes, and 3% of the fresh water, you know, definitely. And 1% water is drinkable, which is also is, is surface. It is, the 1% water does not uh, meet our, all our demands. So, so roughly 85 to 90 percent water we're extracting from ground level to run our factory. So that is very important how we can uh, uh, mitigate this sort of uh, water uh, related uh, issues. So for the reason, we have taken a lot of leadership from the institution periods. So we bought low liquor ratio dyeing machines. Why low liquor ratio dyeing machine? If you have the low liquor ratio dying machine, does not mean you can able to re reduce the water consumption if you do not have that process knowledge. So our low liquor ratio dying machines we bought very initially is a one is to five liquor ratio. So by applying this technological advancement and the process knowledge, we can reduce forty percent of water. So if you think about what Nishata Pallad explained, he has uh, reduced the IFC has reduced enormous amount of water through this. Uh, uh, but technological advancement and this guidance and monitoring system. So if you see the industry average might be water consumption, 80 to 90 liters, while Ecotex is using only 40, 45 liter water. So there's enormous water we have reduced. So water reduction is, does not mean uh, only this water, that it is connected with this pumping of water from the ground level. So the, that the water we're using for less water means we are extracting less amount of water from the ground level. So less amount of water using means less chemical, less chemical means we are using less dye stuffs, less dye stuff means that we are extracting less amount of effluent to the ETP. So there will be, there will be some sort of less uh, uh, but, uh, effluent will be generated. So apart from this, we are using a special dye stuff so you know definitely in, in the reactive dyes, average, uh, the fixation rate is 55 to 65%. So we are using those dye stuffs are more than 85 to 90% fixation. That means 10 to 15% on hydrolyzed head, dyes in way to the ETP. So that will create less amount of cellars. So we are talk, talking about water. We are talking about that input management stream. We are taking about the chemical, which is needed less amount of water to fix up the dye stops. And even we are using less uh, low uh, temperature surface dye stops and chemicals, 
which can reduce enormous amount of carbon emissions. So less is more, less is beautiful. Apart from this, what initiative we have taken uh, uh, this uh, 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 to reuse, reduce and recycle concept in Nicotex. So another important thing that uh, we have uh, uh, we have already used uh, 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 already invested regarding the rainwater harvesting. So so roughly you know the average uh, the rainfall in uh, in Bangladesh uh, roughly uh, uh, fifteen hundred meter to two uh, millimeter to two thousand millimeters. So as because we have the rooftop uh, uh, area, so we are collecting the water from. 200,000 square feet of area, roughly 45,000 meter cube of water every year. So that means 45,000 meter cube of water we are not extracting from ground level. So what are we? That water is uh, is 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 really is conserving the precious uh, 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 resources, and it benefits not only the ecotex but also uh, uh, surroundings, environment, and the local community also. Another what another things is, uh, 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 is coming from might be uh, this we are using uh, energy savings concept in uh, exhaust gas boiler. This is called EZB because the the amount uh, of uh, gas is we are using from this natural gas. This is using in our boiler or generator. The generator. Is, uh, is discharging 450 degree temperature in the environment. That, that hot water we are using to run the EZB, exhaust gas boiler. Another is this jacket hot we are using for to run the sealer in our uh, roughly, this is uh, 250 uh, uh, capacity of uh, refrigerant tons. 250 refrigerant tons mean we are using less uh, uh, amount of uh, the fossil fuel to 175 uh, kilowatt hour we are savings. That means we are savings uh, 523 metric ton of carbon emission every year through this concept. Uh, thank you, Mr. Khan. I, I think it's really impressive and commendable that you're investing resources uh, into this agenda. Um, if I could just briefly ask you two follow-up questions, because you are investing resources into uh, both these uh, social and economic uh, betterment. Uh, one, could you just very briefly tell me what your motivation is? And then secondly, what you see as the key challenges and opportunities for decarbonization in the manufacturing sector in the next couple of years. You know, this uh, the Bangladesh RMG sector has achieved the impressive growth and uh, the transformation over the past decades in overcoming significant obstacles along with the way that today, uh, however, it faces a new state set of uh, challenges, global, global economic turmoil, severe energy crisis and price pressures, as well as the buying capacity has been declined tremendously. So in the years ahead, the industry will need to embrace the more holistic transformations in, par in partnership with manufacturers, international buyers, workers, representatives, the governments, policymakers, environmental consultants, and other stakeholders. So there's, a, of course, there's a uh, challenges uh, is there. So if uh, said the absence, the big challenge is the absence of easy access to finance, and also, the, if you really have this uh, uh, this uh, decarbonization concept for the solar issues, there will be some land is not availability in manufacturing facility. So most of the factory that has been built not based on this uh, uh, solar panel or wind power or any other source of the uh, hydrocarbon facility. So factory has, has been built in the vertically as because of the scarcity of land. Another is the credibility of technology suppliers due to the lack of knowledge. As another is the less commitment from buyer not providing stimulus because if you do this practice, buyer should come forward with the some certain percent of the premium price. Okay, so if you do not get some percentage of uh, the benefit from buyers, so factory will not willing to have this practice. So another is our uh, power infrastructures not allow rapid uh, rapid transition to renewable energy. Uh, this is another uh, uh, challenges, I do, I do believe. And if, even if you think of the RDC, 
renewable energy certificates. Uh, but if you really trading, if you really buy uh, this uh, renewable energy from to offset this, this is another big challenge because mar that market is not still available. So this is a limitation. So solar alone cannot provide comprehensive alternatives to fossil fuels. Wind and hydro, if available, could make good combinations for replacing fossil fuel based on based on grid also. Thank you. I think that's so a these are the challenges. Thank you. Um, and I think through some of the other panelists, we'll discuss those a little bit more in detail. Um, so if I could um, um, move on to Mr. Arshak um, Patanaik um, from Puma. Could you tell us a little bit about your climate commitments uh, in driving the reduced carbon emissions in your supply chain in Bangladesh? And could you also tell us about some of the successes and challenges you've had there? Okay. Uh, I hope uh, my voice is audible. Uh, yeah, clear. Okay, uh, thanks. Uh, is it clear? Uh, can you confirm my voice is audible? Yes, we can hear you, but we can't see you yet. Okay. Thank you. Oh, you can, okay, uh, there you are. Sorry. Okay. Uh, thank you, Asani. Uh, yeah, uh, thanks for your question and uh, thanks, Nisad, for the opportunity to speaking uh, in this uh, uh, panel discussion. Uh, yeah. So if you see uh, at FEMA, uh, we are very much uh, committed to uh, climate action. Uh, we have actually integrated uh, the climate action into our business strategy. Uh, in 2019, we have uh, committed to science first target in which uh, we have uh, committed 60% reduction in GHG intensity by 2030 from a baseline of 2017. Uh, that is uh, as per the well below two degrees Celsius scenario. But now we have uh, already submitted an application to science first target to upgrade uh, to a more ambitious target in as per 1.5 degree scenario. That means uh, we are committed to reduce 33% uh, absolute reduction by 2030 from the baseline of 2017. <laughs> Uh, we are committed to net zero uh, by 2050 as part of our uh, mission charter. And separately, we have another target to achieve 25% of renewable energy uh, from uh, renewable sources uh, uh, by the core factories. Core factors means those factories who are uh, contributing to 80% of our business. Uh, another commitment we have uh, to phase out uh, uh, coal fired boilers from our uh, coal supply chain. So these are our uh, uh, major uh, climate commitments, and we can see uh, we have uh, achieved a lot in this area in past uh, four to five years. Uh, we can see here uh, absolute scope three emission has reduced by 12% uh, in 2021, which is a 46% uh, reduction in GSG intensity with respect to 2017 baseline. Um, the cleaner production programs like uh, Packed, uh, clean by design uh, has been backbone uh, of our uh, climate actions. Uh, we have also seen renewable energy programs in various countries. Coming to Bangladesh, uh, we have extensively worked with the uh, PAC program. Most of our core suppliers has been participating in PAC programs and achieve uh, good savings. Um, I can say uh, almost 22% of GHG reductions uh, with a saving of energy, saving of 70% and uh, uh, good uh, return on investment with a payback period uh, within within one year or six months. Uh, Pima is also uh, supporting our suppliers in Bangladesh in terms of uh, better financing programs in 2016. Um, and uh, that is based on the credit rating uh, that includes uh, sustainable performance of suppliers. That means suppliers can get uh, their payment uh, from the brand much uh, earlier as compared to the uh, normal uh, normal uh, schedule uh, of payment. And that helps the uh, cash flow of the suppliers immensely. Thank you. Um, uh, I think it's commendable that you not only have targets, but you're actually uh, putting more pressure on yourself to do more. I think that's uh, that's great to hear. Uh, for a brand like Puma, a lot uh, of your customer loyalty is driven by the brand's value. Um, yeah. And as you're increasing your commitment, uh, my first question is, what more will you be asking from your suppliers? 
And then related to that is how do you see the fashion industry um, and fashion brands playing a role in shaping the future of the decarbonization agenda in Bangladesh? Right. Yeah, uh, so coming to your first question, uh, we are uh, uh, committing to our consumers nowadays. There's a lot of consumer awareness about uh, decarbonization. Uh, people are taking uh, informed decisions while purchasing uh, the products. So that is very much in the US and European markets. So we are uh, committed to develop uh, more and more uh, sustainable products. We have launched uh, a collection called Excel, which is a carbon uh, neutral product. We have uh, launched, uh, launched uh, Reason collection, which is based on recycled products. And also there's something called Reshweet which we are exploring if uh, iconic uh, Puma product, uh, sneaker product, which is called Sweat, can be a biodegradable uh, sneaker product in which uh, the products will be taken back from the market and uh, it, it will be fed into a composting uh, facility. And we can see whether the, the shoes uh, can be converted into composting uh, facility uh, in this manner. Uh, yes, uh, it requires a lot of uh, new uh, inputs, new investment from the suppliers uh, where it coming to sustainable material uh, selection, uh, investment in technology like uh, cutting, uh, cutting waste recycling. And we see this uh, happening uh, our suppliers in Bangladesh, like uh, suppliers like DBL, Square Fashion, uh, they have their own in-house recycling facilities. Uh, coming to uh, uh, decarbonization initiatives uh, in Bangladesh, we see uh, we we are we, there are positive signs on this, and uh, suppliers are uh, willing to invest. Like uh, uh, Salim is mentioning, low liquor ration machines, exhaust gas boilers. Uh, so these are the uh, good signs uh, for the Bangladesh uh, the sector. Uh, we are collaborating a lot under Fashion Charter to have uh, decarbonization. Uh, in 2021, we conducted a baseline study for uh, uh, renewable energy in collaboration with UNDP and h &M. uh, and we could see uh, the players like BGMEA, IFC can play a lot of role in, uh, role in basically influencing the policy decisions uh, that is very much required to, for a renewable energy transition. We, we, are, uh, we have seen like uh, Made in Bangladesh week in which our CSO uh, joined uh, and uh, emphasized that the growth momentum should be done in a sustainable manner. And recently we have a, a policy advocacy meeting, which has come very positive when under the fashion charter where the government of Bangladesh, uh, they, they actually confirmed that they are very positive and they want to take it forward, uh, the policy decisions uh, in favor of uh, energy transition. Hope, hope I have answered your question. Yeah. No, thank you. That's that's uh, great, and that's actually a, a fantastic um, transition to Dr. Atik Rahman. Um, Dr. Atik, if I can ask you, what are some of the key policies that you think need to come into place uh, in order to promote the decarbonization agenda? And what is it that the academic institutions can do? to work with both uh, with government as well as development partners and other stakeholders in um, in trying to get these policies adopted. Um, Dr. Atik, are you still with us? Yeah. Unmute. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Thank you. Okay, right. Um, first of all, it's an excellent uh, concept and a growth development of our um, Bangladesh garment textile sector to take into consideration energy efficiency <coughs> and energy consumption uh, to the level of um, making it a uh, more efficient system and using less energy, which in turn brings money to the company and also goodwill for the product. Because as you go to the international market, people would like to know if you're following best procedures and most um, modern and supportive procedures. Um, so the fashion who are trying to um, 
uh, sell their products they have a plus point on um, the efficiency and uh, energy sensitive issue is probably not the top area in the market cost is the main one but this has um, contribution to the cost uh, if we can do it less energy more products as to the quality control there has to be uh, assured need for controlling quality and um, um, the system having to raise temperature very high is uh, probably i don't know the chemistry of all the chemicals that's being used that some of the chemicals also have uh, probably irritating um, behavior at higher temperature so if the temperature is lower level um, and can be done it's probably good for the uh, product i.e. the clothes and also the future of the wearers so what um, is a good thing that all that is happening slowly we have been propagating it for a long time as environmentalist how do you lower the energy of the system and how do you make it also more efficient for um, uh, do more with less uh, in terms of energy and water consumption um, uh, the type of quality of water needed um, has a cost so um, water consumption reduction with um, better uh uh, uh uh use of uh, chemicals or lower use of chemicals is always a uh, necessary or helps the cost to come down lower so this is um, a very um good uh, initiative by the industries to go further it also bangladesh water uh coming from the rivers and the lakes and we are flooded with water in rainy season the tragedy of water is um, you have the highest amount of water one when you don't need any more so that creates flood and you know more in the winter season and then you don't get enough there and you have to also manage the quality um be- because um there is a huge amount of water that passes through bangladesh bangladesh and water are pretty much synonymous for living so but on the other hand for the industrial purposes it means money it means cost um and uh, it's great to see that uh, the government and the textile industry is moving in the right direction less chemicals less water and a more efficient system is the way to move forward i think um over the last 30 40 years of our government industry development is in the last decade that um, water and water um, use uh, re- reduction has become a criteria so in terms of energy efficiency one of the policies we advise the government is energy efficiency water efficiency fuel efficiency um, in in all possible ways uh, to Uh, make the industry go further and um, garment uh, and textile is the biggest industrial sector now um, jute is probably the second big one and there are other uh, leather and other areas uh, coming up in the industrial sector so uh, complementing uh, the learning from this um, major industrial input and efficient output will give um, uh evidence to the other upcoming sectors to do a uh, similar energy efficient system um bangladesh has been fortunate to get such a big garment textile industry and uh, um, being the major exporter and bringing uh, international uh, money right now that dollar has uh, such a scarcity and value uh, that has been increased um our industries do suffer a bit for uh, transactional cost of dollar conversion but nonetheless being such a big industry uh, it is being able to face it uh, boldly and also do better which helps the economy of bangladesh as a whole um, on technical details i don't want to go there are other experts who knows better and does it but on the policy side we have been um, 
influence the policy the government industries have been discussing with us the uh, industrial sector as a whole and um, uh, we have been uh, advising the government how best to help um, those who are trying to establish good practices particularly more efficient system doing more output of higher quality with less input and uh, carbon reduction so um, um, let me stop there i didn't go into many of the technical details but big policy issues but uh, would be happy to uh, answer questions in other areas also thank you very yeah, much yeah i i just have one observation and a sort of a brief follow on um question you covered so many interesting things in that in that article um obviously it's very the scientific evidence is very clear in terms of a need um to invest in decarbonization and you mentioned earlier one there needs to be a, a reduced cost for the private sector to adopt these technologies and um uh, salim had mentioned earlier there needs to be more knowledge about uh the technologies available uh, as well as uh, at an affordable cost and then you also spoke to the need um to ensure that they are adequate um quality uh regulations in place to to assure quality and safety and uh, academic and this is purely a question to you academic institutions have traditionally sort of stayed out on the outskirts of policy discussions um and you know given where bangladesh is now what do you see the role of academic institutions being in being part of the policy discussion and how can we uh, all of us here at the table leverage you more um thank you uh, we have been bangladesh center for advanced studies uh, for us our definition of advanced is that areas which are not normally touched by the university sector or the research areas we tend to open new areas and particularly work what is relevant to the people and the ecosystem and the government policy world of um, many countries but definitely bangladesh that's our focus here so um, policy is one but we also talk about technology and um, garment industry has shown that they are moving with time in terms of changing technology lowering down the cost and particularly lowering down pollution uh, in the system so these are um, this brings uh, kudos and good um, the public uh, acceptance of the garment and textile sector and that is very very useful for the textile sector rather than i mean many industries polluting industries they spend a huge lot of money trying to uh, impress on people that um, it's not as harmful as the thing but nothing like doing by showing that it works so this has been a very good example how the emerging industry is not only coming but as you know garments industry in bangladesh is one of the largest in the world uh, second largest and also uh, in terms of um, pollution yield if it reduces that it's good for our uh, economic health physical health uh, uh, as of human being as well as that of the ecosystem uh, let me stop there then i can come back Well. Thank you so much. Um and I see that we have about 89 participants online. Um so please feel free to ask any question even if it's not on the broad topic of decarbonization if you have any questions to ask of any uh, of the sure. panelists and the business they do please go ahead but um I wanted to give the floor back back to Dr. Salim Khan uh sorry Mr. Salim Khan just really quickly um as he wanted to add a, a few points on um on energy on the concept of energy savings yeah exactly so thank you thank you to give the floor again so i have to add few things it's very important you know that every every year we are really consuming 1800 billion liters of water to produce 120 billion pieces of uh, garments which we are ship we are uh, exporting to europe and america 
and and by uh, by the worth of 44 or 42 billion dollars not only we are exporting uh, garments we are exporting also the fresh water to the european america you understand that means we are extracting 1800 billion liter of water every year and juxtaposedly we are really destroying the surface water so in that sense by 2030 if you really have a plan to export 100 billion dollar of our export that means we have to extract double of our water what we're extracting right now so what we have to do the ecotex has taken the great initiative regarding the jet in the zero liquid discharge so right now we are consuming uh, 400 million liter 400 4,000 liter of water every day. That means if we install the JDLT plan and evaporation plan, we in future, so by 2023, we will not extract any single liter of water from ground level. That means this is the closed loop. And the salt we are using, uh, Atiksa knows about this, this, the global salt is extracting the, the environment and the aquatic life is destroying. Every day we are using 10 to 12 tons of global salt. This global salt will reduce again and again. So this is the big achievement for Bangladesh that we have started. It will be run by 2023. Hopefully, this is the big breakthrough of the uh, garments and textile industry. Thank you very much. Uh, so we have one question from one of the, the participants, um, which said, uh, I was curious uh, how we can scale the amount of garments uh, leaders of uh, adopting pact measures. So this would be to you, Nishat. Um, how does IFC reach and collaborate with so many uh, with so many stakeholders? Um, and this uh, second follow up question is: Can we expect newer programs after pact, which can help us meet the fifty percent GHG reduction targets by twenty thirty? So Nishat, let me ask those questions from you first, and then move on. Shall I try to answer that question? There is nothing here. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, okay. we can hear you. Yes. Uh, so, uh, you know, uh, we started this program in 2013. It's a long journey. And the way, if you, uh, the Partnership for Cleaner Textile actually st stands uh, partnership. So what, what happened uh, when we started the program, we brought all the stakeholders who are who are interested in pushing the sustainability agenda. So uh, in the program, the, st the, the key stakeholders are brands, factories, government, financial institution. So so we brought all of them to to uh, push the agenda. So uh, another point. Uh, there was another question. Can I? Can you repeat the question again, uh, Ashani? I think I missed it. Um, was can we expect newer programs after PACT, which can help meet the fifty percent GHD reduction targets by twenty thirty? Uh, so PACT is currently, you know, it's going to end uh, this year. Um, the phase two of the program. Um, we are um, going to carry out a uh, inline evaluation, and that will guide us on on the next uh, phase of the program. So, um, most likely by the end of the year, we'll know uh, 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 how the design of the you know the, uh, the program. Thank you. Um, the following two questions I'm actually going to group together. Um, they are around access to to finance, basically. Um, so one was, if we want to install energy efficient equipment like EGB, heat absorption, uh, condensed econom economizer, um, etc., um, is there a fund that they can tap into without interest? And um, related to that, are there any economic incentives available in Bangladesh? for industries who are moving towards um, decarbonization. So that would actually be a, a question that would be open to um, the whole panel, including um, our our, um, our speaker, Rajesh. So 
So if anyone wants to jump in, please go ahead. Yeah, sure. So I can I can take up this question. So look, uh, you know, if you talk of the energy efficiency projects, right, and uh, they will pay back you in a less than one year. So the question is, how will you be justifying, you know, the consciousness in such type of projects, right? And uh, the experience which we had working with the companies in Bangladesh, we are lending on a commercial basis and we have supported the decarbonization for a number of textile companies. But if there is a case where you need consciousness and there is some justification, uh, I think in that case, uh, we can look upon but generally, IFC doesn't want to distort the market, right? If, if it is, uh, if you can land on commercial basis, if there is a good payback, then the justification is difficult. So depending on case-to-case -case basis, we can look at it. Thanks. Thank you. And Dr. Atik, I don't know if um, there are any funds available um, through any government initiatives or any uh, foundations or any uh, foundations in, in Bangladesh. That you know about. I'm relatively new to Bangladesh and, and I, I'm not sure if they are, but it would be interesting to hear um, if there is any such uh, initiatives or, or Nishat or anyone else here. Uh, I think the, the GTSF, Green Transformation Fund, that is still available. Um, I'm not, uh, I don't know about the interest rate, but uh, uh, certainly you can reach out to uh, the banks, financial institution, and uh, to get more information. Thank you. Um, so we have another really interesting question uh, asked by one of the participants. If initiatives are taken where designers will keep in mind the colors to be used at the designing stage to avoid harmful chemical discharge, uh, how do we educate the designers in this regard and how can we put together this whole awareness of, at the design stage of production? Can, we, can, can I give the answers? Yes, please go ahead. Thank you. Because uh, this is totally input management stream, but if you really think about this, uh, Nishat Apal already explained that uh, by uh, 2011, uh, in 30th July might be that uh, the detox campaign that has been initiated in China from China, this two river has been inundated with lots of uh, contaminants, hazardous substances. The, the, since then, this, this green press has been taken the initiative to make a collaborative with uh, all the brand, all brands, retailers, suppliers, dyes chemical manufacturers, uh, uh, textile manufacturers, all the governments, a lot of uh, the stakeholders are joined to make a roadmap by 2020. Okay, they have, they have identified this 11 priority positive list that need to be phased out by 2020 to uh, 2020. Okay, this is the PFC, PFOS, or organic compounds, thalates, APO, like a lot of things. Uh, the 11 priority positive list. So based on that, that they have initiated JDSC, zero discharge of hazardous chemical. This is the part of basically that initiation has been taken in 2011. This is the part of also Greenpeace. This Greenpeace has been started in 1948 after the Second World War, maybe, you know. Okay, then 1971, 2011, they have, they have worked a lot for this uh, de deforestation, so climate action, lot of, this NGO, on kind of NGO. So they have set the parameters, the chemicals they are using that need to be JDSC compliance, JD, JDSC level one, two, three, okay. So apart from this, if you really ensure the chemical and dyes you're using must be blue sand certified. The Ecodex and most of the few factories in Bangladesh are blue sand certified fact, uh, 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 chemical we're using. So that is very important issue. The, if the designer knows which color is blue sand certified, the combination of dye stuff, the combination of the chemicals that has, has been using to replicate these chemicals, they can find out through the blue finder which chemical is really uh, certified or not, blue sand certified or not, or JDC level three or not, or CTC certified or not. That is enough for to ensure this input management stream to whatever the color, color is not the limitation, every color we can produce, just to add few percentage of this, uh, the premium, do you understand? So uh, basically the sustainability is not the, uh, is the free, it is the certain level of cost, the buyers should understand, but practice 
what the source of this uh, garment they are buying from. That is very important. So uh, always the need to think about this source of which companies producing this sort of uh, the good quality of product in terms of environmental, social, and the economical con uh, context. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, I was glad that you added that piece because part of the question was asking if that meant that we had to phase out uh, vibrant colors. But it sounds like there there's new technologies that would allow or new chemicals that would allow us to create those vibrant uh, colors. So any color, any colors. Any yes. So that that's great to hear. Um, so we just have two minutes until we close. I really wanted to thank all our panelists here. Um, I learned a lot today from each of you, and I wish we had time to spend more time with um, each of you to go into a lot more detail. But I think the one takeaway that I took, uh, that I got from this conversation was that each of us have a role to play along the value chain individually. But in order for us to have any impact, we can, if we leverage each other, we can really have a meaningful impact and create meaningful change. So thank you to all our panelists. If we can give a virtual a round of thank applause you. for all of them for participating. Okay. Asami, thank yes. you. Asami, come in. Maybe we could have a group picture and everyone can turn on the video just for the panelists. Uh, sure, maybe we can just wrap up so we can leave, let the participants go and then we can take a, a group picture real quick. But also thank sure, you. Yes. Thank you. Um, but also thank you for all of you who, who joined um, who joined this call. Uh, we appreciate your time and your last. And we hope to continue the discussion uh, as we go along. Thank you. All right, Alavi, over to you. Thank you. I think uh, we're at the end of this session, so if everyone could uh, open their camera.